In this video, I'm going to talk about some different install methods for installing a radiant barrier in a metal or a tile roofing system. Now, if you've seen some of the other videos, just remember, you have to have an airspace in the assembly in order for a radiant barrier to work. This is typically going to be any roof that goes over a batten system. Or some roofs may be installed directly to the deck, like a corrugated product or a high-profile metal roof, since they have minimal contact and have the required airspace. I'm going to go through four different installation techniques. Under battens, direct to the deck, under battens and counter battens, and finally between the battens and the counter battens. The most common install method is directly over the underlayment and below the battens. And there are many roofing systems that use a batten system. And the one thing they all have in common is that they'll all perform better when installed over a radiant barrier. Normally the roofing foil is simply rolled out on top of the underlayment and held in place with either staples or cap nails until the battens are installed. If you're installing the battens the same day, then staples will work fine. If you're going to come back at a later date, I'd recommend the cap nails to provide maximum protection against the wind. Overlap the seams about two or three inches, and there's no need to tape the seams. Then install your battens just like your normal roofing system, and then proceed to install the roof on top. This method can be used for new construction or a tear-off. It can also be used over an existing roof as an overlay without doing a tear-off. The most typical example of this application is a standing seam metal roof over a batten system with the radiant barrier installed below. Another method that's rapidly gaining popularity is the angled batten or slat version. And the way this works is the, the battens are installed at a 45 degree angle on the roof and you leave an inch or two gap between each one. What this does is it allows a ventilation path between the battens and underneath the roof from the drip edge all the way up to the ridge. Now this works best with standing seam metal roofs. The standing seam metal roof is installed directly on top of the battens. Typically they're one by four and they're installed anywhere between 10 and 16 inches apart depending on the gauge of the metal. But the 1x4s work great because they have a lot of surface area to attach the clips onto. The next method is the direct to deck method. Essentially it's the exact same method except you're eliminating the battens. Now this is only going to work with what's called a raised system. Basically a product that has a natural airspace. This is usually going to be a corrugated product or a barrel tile or something like that that has minimal contact with the deck. Typically you want to have less than 20 percent surface area contact here in order to maintain that airspace and get the full benefit of a radiant barrier under this type of a roof. Whether a product will work with this method really is pretty easy to determine. For example, this corrugated product as you can see has minimal surface contact. It's probably maybe 5, 10, 15 percent in contact. Now if you switch this out and you put this product down, you can see now you've probably got 80% full contact and maybe 20% open. So you'd get virtually no benefit of installing a radiant barrier under this system since you have so much surface contact. Here's an example of a tile roof being installed directly to the deck without using a batten system. First the underlayment's put down, then the roofing foil is put down, and then the tile is mechanically attached directly to the deck. The next install method is under a batten and a counter batten. The additional counter batten provides an air channel that will allow air to flow freely between the radiant barrier and the roof. And this provides a couple of additional benefits. In the summer, that airflow is going to keep the roof cooler and reduce heat gain into the building. And in the winter, that's going to be cold air coming through here. That'll help keep the roof colder to prevent or reduce ice damming. Finally, the last system I'm going to show you is installing the roofing foil between the battens and the counter battens. Now for this application, you definitely want to use the double-sided foil, uh, roofing foil product. It's going to provide the absolute maximum benefit at reducing summer heat gain. This is a fairly complex system, but by lifting the roofing foil off the roof deck and providing an airspace on both sides, the top layer of aluminum foil is going to work off the reflectivity quality and the bottom layer is going to work off the emissivity quality. Plus, the ventilated channel will allow air to flow through 
the roof. Finally, because of the crisscrossing battens, you're going to have minimal contact that will allow conductive heat to pass through the wood. With a system like this, you will virtually eliminate all the radiant heat gain and significantly reduce the conductive heat gain through this roof. And the proof is really in the attic. Although the top of the roof may be 150 or 180 degrees, if you touch the bottom of that roof deck, it's going to be close to the ambient or the outside air temperature with virtually no increase in heat gain. As you can see, there are many different install methods to install the radiant barrier in a metal, tile, or other type of raised roofing system. As long as you have an airspace between the hot roof and the roofing foil, the radiant barrier will work significantly to reduce the heat gain into the home or building. Finally, here's a tip on all these different roofing systems. The space between the roofing foil and the roof does not have to be ventilated for it to work. However, if you can get some airflow under the roof above the foil, it will perform better. Now some products like this corrugated metal have a natural air path that allow air to flow from the drip edge up to the top. However, if you take a product like this standing seam metal roof, you'll notice it has no ventilated channel. Basically it becomes a dead airspace. Now if possible what you want to do is create some ventilation channels to allow air to flow under this roof. And there's several different methods to do this. The easiest way is to leave a small gap between the ends of the battens. Or you could cut some notches in the battens using either a circular saw or a router. This will allow for some natural airflow below the roof. Another option for standing seam roofs is a ventilated metal batten or you can use a floating clip that will get the roof off the deck and create a ventilated channel. For a coated steel roof with battens, you would want to cut some notches in the bottom of the battens or use a ventilated batten product like this. This video has been a quick summary of the most common installation methods. If you have particular questions about your job, visit the website roofingfoil.com or give one of our experts a call and we can help you with your application. If you enjoyed this video, please like this video. If you'd like to see some related roofingfoil.com videos, click on the links to the side. Finally, if you'd like to subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on the button below. Thanks for watching.